Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with web GPU graphics programming. In the last several videos, I explained how to create some simple shapes and primitives in web GPU application by writing the vertex and color data directly in the Cedar code. This approach is only possible for creating very simple shapes. It is almost impossible to use these methods for creating complex 3D graphics with different colors and textures. In this video, I will introduce GPU buffers. I will show you how to use the GPU buffer to hold vertex and color information. In this example, I will use a colored square to illustrate the concept of the GPU buffers. This video will introduce several new concepts. It will be foundation to create complex 3D graphics object. So please make sure you fully understand the content of this video. A GPU buffer in web GPU represents a block of memory that can be used to store data for GPU operations. The data in GPU buffer is stored in a linear layout, meaning that each byte of the allocation can be addressed by its offset from the start of the GPU buffer. Here is an illustration of the GPU buffer. In the previous examples, we write the vertex data and color information directly in this CIDR processor. One issue with this approach is the CIDR code is a text string. This has no syntax highlight and intelligence. It is very hard to debug. If it can write vertex and color information into GPU buffer, here, GPU memory or cache using TypeScript. It will be very easy for debugging because for TypeScript, Visual Studio Code has a very good syntax highlight and intelligence. In this example, I will show you how to use a GPU buffer to store the vertex and color data. Again, we will use the Git tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download all the source code used in the last video. Now open a command, promote the window, and run the following command. Git clone. This will generate a WebGPU06 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in the last video. Now we want to change the name of the WebGPU06 folder to GPU07 and CD into it. Okay, at this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. Okay, this is Visual Studio Code interface. First, we can close this welcome page. Here, it contains all the source code uh, used in the last video. Now, open a new terminal window and use the npm install command to restore the npm package. This installation may take a while to finish. Please be patient. Okay, finished. Now all the installed package are stored in the node modules folder. Next, let's make some changes to the index.html file. From this drst folder, open its index.html file. First, we need to change here to 6 to 7 because this is the 7th video. And also, we need to change the H1 title here. Create a square buffer. And we also uh, to delay the select elements because this example does not take any user input. So we delay this code. 
Here we keep the Kevis element and with ID Kevis web GPU. And we also set the size, you know, width and height. Now we can save this file. Before making changes to the main.ts file, here we first open the help.ts file from the src folder, help.ts file, open it. We will put uh, the web GPU initialization related code into a new method called init GPU. Here we add a new method. Okay, the new method name is init GPU. Uh, you can see the code here is very common and does not change for most web GPU applications. This method returns device, canvas, and swap chain related objects. Next, we need to add another method called create GPU buffer. Here is the code of this method create GPU buffer. You can see this method takes three input arguments. First is device, GPU device. And the second is the data, is the vertex data. And the third argument is usage flag. Here we set the default value as vertex. So this means we create the default vertex data. Inside here we use device create a buffer to create a GPU buffer. You can see inside we set the size, use the data, the bytes length. The usage here we just the input usage flag. The next attribute is mapped at creation. Here we set it to true. This means that the GPU buffer is owned by the CPU, which is accessible in read and write from TypeScript. Once the GPU buffer is mapped, the application can ask for access to the range of content with the get map range method. From here we can set the data stored to the GPU buffer. This is the TypeScript code. Please note the mapped GPU buffer cannot be directly used by the GPU. It must be unmapped. Use the unmap method before working. Uh, use it can be submitted to the GPU queue timeline. You can see here the buffer we call the unmap methods to set the buffer as unmapped in order to be used by the GPU. Here, our create GPU buffer returns unmapped buffer, so it can be used by the GPU. So be careful here about the GPU buffers mapped and unmapped states. The map is for the CPU, unmapped is for GPU, so that's different. Now we can save this file and close it. Next, we need to make uh, some changes to the main.ts file. From src folder, open the main.ts file. We need to replace its content. Uh, you can see here, we first introduce the init GPU and create GPU buffer. This is a new method we just uh, implemented in the herb.ts file. Inside this create square the methods, we first call the init GPU here. We generate the GPU object. From this object, we can get the device, the GPU dot device. This device will be used to create a pipeline and a render paths. Next, we define the vertex data and color data for our square. Uh, from this uh, small window, you can see here is uh, what has coordinates of our square. We uh, divide this square into two triangles, A, B, D, and the triangle D, B, C. The vertex of each triangle must be arranged in the counterclockwise order. We also assign the color to each vertex. You can see A is red. B is green, C is blue, and D is yellow. Of course, you can also divide it into triangle uh, use the other way around. For example, you can divide as A, B, C, C, B, A. 
different separation of the triangles. That's okay. The final results will be the same as long as you put the right order of the vertex. You can see this vertex data and color data are consistent with the figure shows here. Uh, not also here. Uh, even though for the color data, we use flat 32 array. But inside this, we still use 1 and 0 to represent the color. We didn't use the 1.0, 0.0, and 0.0 represents the color. This is because this is a TypeScript code. It does not distinguish 1.0 and 1. This is different from the Cedar code. In C code, you have to use 1.0 and 0.0. Next, we create two GPU buffers. One is vertex buffer. Here, we use the vertex data. Another one is color buffer. Here, we use the color data. Next, we introduce the Cedar. The C code will be discussed in a moment. We then create the pipeline. You can see device create a render pipeline. The new code we add here is for the buffers. You can see this is new code. We never used it before. The buffer basically is a array. You can see it contains two elements. One is for the vertex data, and another one is for the color. For the vertex data, here we have a array stride. Here we set eight because for each vertex we have two x and a y coordinate. The one coordinate floating thirty two number. Each floating thirty two number requires four bytes, so we have two floating two numbers, so we have eight bytes. For the color data, we have three RGB. We have three floating two numbers, so it's three times four is twelve. Another important parameter here is the seeder location. We set the vertex the seeder location as zero and the color seeder location as one. This seeder location is very important, so we use this seeder location to identify the data. The other part of the code is very similar to that used in the previous examples. You can see here. We said uh, primitive topology as a triangle list because we divide our square into two triangles. So we, here we use a triangle list. One new thing here is that after setting the pipeline to the random path here, we also need to set the vertex buffer to the random path using the vertex buffer and the color buffer here. We set the vertex buffer using vertex buffer and the color buffer. Here, 0 and 1 represents the GPU buffer slot. We simply set the vertex position to the slot 0 and the color information to the slot 1. Another thing is here, render pass dot draw method. Here we have uh, 6 because we have two triangles. Each triangle has 3, so we put a 6. Now we finish the modification to this file. We can see this file. Next, we need to make a modification to our Cedar code. So from the src folder, open the cedars.ts file. We need to replace this content. Okay, you can see here is a vertex cedar. Inside the cedar, we didn't uh, define any vertex and colors in this seed code because we already stored the vertex and color data in GPU buffers. Here we introduce two input parameters. One is position, here we use pause, and another is color. Remember here we use location zero and location and one. Location zero is vertex data. And looking the one is color data. So this must be consistent with the Cedar location definition in the pipeline in our main.ts file. This is how we set up the relationship between the vertex Cedar and the GPU buffer. You can see this two input we define use the vector for app. You see here also vector for app. It looks like not very consistent with the data stored 
in the vertex and color buffer because one is a two element array for the vertex and one is a three element array. Here, why we use a vector four? Vector four always has four elements. This is because web GPU seeder is smart enough to automatically convert them into vector four type by adding zero to Z component and one for the W component. If we can see vector two type, they will add zero to Z and one to W component. If we have see the three component vector here for the color, they will add one to the W component. So they will add default value internally. So you don't need to worry about it. Here we also define two output variables. One is the build in position and another is the weight color. Inside the main method, we process the position and the color. This is very similar to that we used before. Inside fragment seeder, we introduce the input, the weight color, and also the output frag color. You can see inside the main method, we set the weight color as the output color. Uh, you should already be familiar with this code because we have used it previously. Okay, this is the seeder we use when creating our square. Now we can save this file and uh, close it. Up to now, we have finished all the programming for this example. Now we can run the following command on the terminal window to bind our TypeScript code in production mode. NPM run prod. Okay, the bundle file is created successfully. You can see the main bundle.js file. It's very small, the only 3.34 KIB. Now, from this status bar, you can see a go live link. Now we can click this link to open the default Chrome canary to view our square. Okay, here is our square with different vertex color. Here is red, green, blue, and yellow. From one vertex to another, you can see the color changes smoothly because WebGPU interpreted the color internally, so this gives a smooth color gradient. Now we have a complete our application. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video. I will post the link for the source code below this video. You can click the link to download the source code. I will end this video here. In next video, I will show you how to create a same square use a single GPU buffer that holds both the vertex and the color data. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.